Hello and welcome to the next episode of our Let's Keep the Conversation Going series. I'm joined today by Catherine Stagg, who is a Senior Mortgage and Protection Advisor with Mortgage Advice Hub, who are part of the brilliant MAB business. Kath has over 20 years experience in our mortgage sector and is someone who is hugely passionate about the importance of positive mental health and well-being. Today we're going to be discussing exactly why mental health and well-being is important to Kath and I hope to establish some of the coping mechanisms Kath uses to overcome challenges. So morning Kath, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Jason? Welcome, welcome. Look, I'm looking forward to this. I know we're going to have a really nice um, yeah, conversation. And probably the, the, the starting point for, for, for everyone who gets involved with this is um, probably just delivering a bit of a background in terms of your financial services uh, history. So how it all started and, and, and how you've got to where you are now. And then we'll delve into the, yeah, to the important stuff about mental health and wellbeing. It, yeah, no worries. So, yes, I started life at um, old RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, 21 year old. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I worked there for around seven years. And then I moved to an estate agency in Sheffield and became their mortgage advisor um, and worked there for 10 years. And then I moved over to Mortgage Advice so about four and a half years ago. Um, and then obviously senior mortgage advisor and uh, protection advisor. So, yeah. Have you been enjoying it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So a bit challenging at times, but yeah, it's um, I think it's rewarding when you obviously get to the first time buyers and remortgages and problem solving. So, but yeah. Well, you would think in, in, in 20 years, wouldn't you? So I'm, I'm like you over 20 years experience. You think you've seen absolutely everything with the different cycles, but then you look at the last three years and it's it's like a Hollywood script, isn't it? So I mean, how, how <laughs> did you find that? How did you find that from a business perspective? How did you find that whole period through yeah, through COVID? I think through COVID it was really tough. I mean, we went from working in an office environment to go into working at home, to all the lenders pulling the rates. I can remember saying to my husband when Halifax pulled the rates to 60% overnight and said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Do you know, what's the world going to do? And then obviously HSBC spent hours and hours waiting for rates to come um, with them. Um, obviously going on at 7 a.m. in the morning and trying to get that rate but yeah but it was so rewarding when you did get the rate and you could tell your client that they got the mortgage and then you thought oh this is all right we're going back in and then all of a sudden the rates went up so it's a bit of a roller coaster but I think we're going towards now the end of it and fingers me crossed. too yeah yeah me too and, and look and I think that if you look at what we I suppose what what we do the thing that motivates me and I'm, I'm proud of is that it is that dream catching so helping somebody get into that house of the dreams helping them get into a um a situation where they've had a refinance and saved themselves some some money it is incredibly rewarding but there's just there's so many bumps in the road along the along the way and I'm sure we'll get into that as we as we as we as we have the have the conversation so you know, the mental health and um, your passion for yeah for, for mental health and being part of the of, of the of, of the charter what what, what maybe dr drove that so where where did that come from because I know within you know your business you were a, a key driver of, of getting the company signed up and, and becoming a signatory yeah I think it's such a massive thing um I've done this job a long time so I do know how I feel personally so sometimes if you have a decline or on a mortgage and you just feel so gutted for them people then you've got to tell and but I always think there's always a solution to the problem. It might not be straight away, could be six months down the line, but there is always a solution. So I always try and tell them, you know, there's always a way. We just need to find that way. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Sometimes it can't be an easy jigsaw puzzle. It has to be a bit more of an harder one and it will go together. And when you get to the point where you find the clients have moved in that house then you know you've done your job and you move on to the next one but I think it's so hard because moving house is the most stressful thing as well, obviously having children and getting married but as soon as they sort of trust you that's your time then to shine for them to get them their dream home yeah and, and why do you think until recently mental health was 
a taboo subject, particularly with employers. It was always difficult to yeah to discuss. So I know you've, as I say, you've been a real driver with yeah with with, with the business you're part of in becoming a signature. But why why do you think it's been such a taboo subject historically? I think people shy away from it. I think people because it's not um it's not a noticeable. A problem so if you're so say if you cut your arm and you were bleeding you'd go to hospital and people would just sort it straight away but with being mental health you keep it all in and I think a lot of businesses shy away from that and just say are you all right yeah okay then and if I think if you you looked into the problem and you sat with the with your peers or your work colleagues you would know you need to go a little bit further and help them with that situation but I think it is definitely getting better now. It's more commercialised. People talk about it freely. Social media, it's, you know, LinkedIn, these places. You go and you find that, and that is help. I mean, your website's mm. fantastic for that because you can go on your website and find something, what you need straight away, regardless if it's a work problem, bereavement, you know, marriage, split up. So that is really mm. good. Yeah, I mean, look, I think, I think we've still got a lot of work to, yeah, work, work to do. But um, I think we've got two, you know, two simple objectives, which I think we, yeah, we touched on you and I in terms of just making sure the website provides that pathway and gateway for people who are struggling, so they can talk to to experts. Because you know, neither me or any other co farmers think we're experts in mental health. Far from it, but you know, connecting with experts is crucial. And then the second objective is just having that reference material and those assets on there that your know, business owners, business leaders can use to lift and drop, hopefully, free of charge into their own environment. So I'm trying to keep things, you know, as 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 as, as simple as I possibly as I possibly can. And with your own business then, have you found it easier to actually talk about honestly how you truly feel? Because again, I think what what's been evident as we've had conversations like this cap has been you know people almost wear different masks so they you know they, they don't necessarily they're not totally honest so you know within your environment have you found it's become easier to actually you know have honest conversations with you know those around you and and, and, and the people leading the business yeah I do think in recent years it's come it's come really really quite easy to speak about it if I have a problem now I know the girls I work with in the office Ole, Lily Grace I can speak to them and say, mm, I'm not really feeling this, or, or what should I do? And they will say, what a problem are, a problem shared is a problem of. So yeah. you then think, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? And then all of a sudden, we've sort of we've sort of got a solution to the problem without me thinking it, going home in my own head, thinking, well, am I going to get this through? What what can I do? How can I achieve this? So yeah. I think definitely 100% the past few years have made people think more about the mm. mental health and how they would react. You know, you said about social media, it's, we, yeah. again, it, it, it delivers this kind of perfect world, doesn't it, which is far from reality. So, again, it can it, it can have quite an adverse effect, can't it, all this, you know, top tick and Facebook and, 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 and all those. And um, So, uh, yeah, what, what, what's your opinion on that? I do think social media can be an hindrance at times, especially for sort of younger children, like younger teenagers, children. Um, but then I do think in other aspects, there are people there to help you for groups and things like that. Um, but I think if, you, if you've got a problem, you speak to somebody mums dads family work peers you know even even the lady in the supermarket you could have a conversation with when in the checkout and mm. you do feel a bit of a sense of oh I feel all right now I've, I've sort I've sort of shared that problem um so I just I do think that helps and I think social mm. media and the press are getting better at realizing mm. there is problems you can't mm. you know, go at people mm. all the time because it's not it's not going to work in in any scenario yeah it's a good point um, and, and that inclusive environment and that positive culture you seem to have with yeah, with your business it's maybe not evident everywhere although it's definitely in, in improving it's maybe not evident everywhere so if if somebody's actually how would you think if somebody's working you know for a business and they're not as maybe accommodating and maybe a bit more dismissive how do you think they should approach that 
I think it's quite hard to do that sometimes because when you're in a toxic work environment, there's no way out of it. Um, and it is quite hard to try and get out of the cycle, regardless of what it could be, because you're brought in, you sometimes brought into it with no fault of your own. You're wanting mm. to be liked by other people in that environment, and then you're stuck in a bit of a vicious circle. And I think what you need to do is you need to sort of think, this isn't right in your own mind. And you might not be able to speak to people in that sort of environment, but there would be other people. Um, so for instance, BDMs or somebody who you could yeah. have a conversation with and say, I'm not really happy here. What do you think I should do? And that would help. Yeah, there's a theme in. Like you guys, you come to you guys and you speak to somebody or, you know, there's always people now who will speak to you and help. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a theme here with what, what, what you're saying, which I'm, I'm, I'm you know, really pleased with. And it's, it's not just encouraging conversation. So obviously the title of this series, Keep the Conversation Going. Um, it, 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 I think what you're emphasising is just that importance to yeah to just have a, a conversation with whoever that close group is around you. Just have conversations and just don't suffer in silence. Basically, what what about other maybe coping mecha mechanisms then? So other than you know, ha you know, having that problem, you know, problem shared, problem half. How else would you deal with the yeah you know, the challenges that we've you know we've been facing? Because you know as we said at the opening, you know, we've had a, a roller coaster three years. So what other coping mechanisms have you used? So in when obviously when it was COVID a few years ago, I had a bit of a meltdown. I didn't know it were more probably do we go out? Do we stay in? Do we see his family? Do we not? I think it was quite hard. I once actually went in the Asda and saw one of my best friends. And I couldn't even speak to her or, or even hug her because you weren't allowed to do that. Now, I found yeah. that really hard at the time. But I had some cognitive behavioural therapy uh, with a lady I know at yeah. the time. And she actually got me to the right place. And instead of having all these sort of things in my head, I sort of diagnosed it down a little bit and it did make it so much better and now if I do have a bit of a hmm actually I'm going to do this I write everything down I have a diary so if I do have a bit of a hmm, not really feeling it today I write why the problem is and why I would solve that problem or how I would go about it so if I had a problem with the case and I didn't know how to turn I'd think, right, I'll ring the BDM or business development manager. I'll ring the lender. Oh, I'll go on um, to a knowledge bank, for instance, and I'll work out. Whereas before, I think all these cases were building up and I didn't have the capacity in my own mind to work out which way they were going to go. So now it's one at a time and I take it step by step. Um and if I do have an issue or a problem, I tend to ask, I tend to say to the person, well, what would we do to improve that? Or how can we do, how can we move on from this? And it, yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, really, I really, really, really like that. And that's, yeah, that, that breaking it down sequentially in a logical way to just, you know, not, it's almost like not, not one domino over, then move on to the next one, isn't it? And it's, so that, that yeah. sequential order, just you apply a logic. And I mean, was there anything from the cognitive treatment that you had? Was there anything that 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 that, that particularly stood out? I mean, I presume that that okay, well, looks that that logic that you've just indicated there was yeah was 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 an output from it. Was there anything else? Yeah. So if I have like a negative thought, she, I have a like a bit of a she, and I write down why it was negative, why I would do it. And by the time I've sort of worked it down on this sheet, it's turned it into a bit of a positive thought. Right, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do this. Oh, I'll go with this. So instead of having my mind being all jumbled, a bit like, a, like all over, now it's a bit more organised. It's like filing cabinets where I can go in and out. And so, yes, yeah, definitely 100% made me realise. And I don't have to have the lady anymore, but I still have her twice a year just to catch up with that and just to sort of get a bit of a clarity of, oh, right, yeah, we're still doing this. We'll do this. Why don't you try this? So uh, it's just a way forward. And there's loads of things online, you know, regarding it. It's such a good way to do it. 
Mm. Um, but yeah, instead of getting all kerfuffled and stressed and saying, oh, well, we'll do this, we'll do, oh no, we'll, we'll do it now. Right, let's do one thing at a time, Kath. And that really makes sense, that. And we have um, one of the supporters and uh, you know, a big advocate for us is a broadcaster and uh, a campaigner called Clark Carlisle. Um, and Clark, he was brilliant at providing some feedback from just interpreting the survey we did um, earlier on this year. Um, and one of the things he uh, absolutely you know, fuses is the importance of the therapy that he has. So great to have conversation with those around him. But sometimes actually having a conversation with his wife, who's brilliant, is actually not necessarily the best thing because she could be causing the stress and the anxiety that he's he's got. Um, and just like you're saying there, he, he talks you know so positively about therapy, and it you know it's not a sign of weakness asking for help and seeking yeah. you know see, see, you know seeking conversation and a different kind of conversation from somebody who knows what they're talking about, a professional. Yeah, she's so good. I mean, I went and I was quite upset all over the place. Didn't know where my wife didn't know where I was going. And as soon as I spoke to that lady, I mean, fair enough, at first it was every week, but obviously then now it's sort of like twice a year. She just yeah. made things make sense. And to take a step back and think, right, let's do it this way. And it's just flowed um, so much easier than having to think, right, I've got to do this. How can I do it? In personal and, and obviously work life. Yeah. Because now I feel a better place and I'm calmer um, than being a bit erratic and, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love that. That is yeah, a brilliant insight, really. Yeah, it really, really is. And as I say, it aligns with a couple of other bits of, of feedback. And how would you describe your, your, your mental health now? So how, how, how are you now? Because, look, it's been a tough... You know, we said about three years, but even you know, the last six, seven months have been really tricky. You know, after Trussonomics, the back end of last year, and all the you know the rate pulls and uh, you know the, the rate, the price changes. <laughs> it's been, it's been very tricky. So how well point. are you now? I think me and my power planner had done. Uh, I think we did sort of fifty mortgages in one day just to get them all in. It was just like a roller coaster. I didn't know the effect of one lender. How many lenders had pulled their rate in that day? It's something that we've never seen as a mortgage industry. So to have this and then trying to get onto the websites with them all crashing and getting the rates in, it was like well, it was like literally being on Wall Street where you was like, get it in, get it in. Um, yeah, so that one was a bit stressful, but I do feel now I can do things in in my time. We've got it done, it can wait till tomorrow. So I've tech took a step back from trying to not also work ridiculous hours in an office like eight to late at night and I've now tried to take that step back and it's working at home a little bit more just to make sure I've got the right balance of home and work so yeah, yeah I do feel so much better now that's brilliant that's brilliant and, and, and again I think with previous conversation that what you're you know intimating there it's more about work-life integration so, um, you know, integrating your family life into your business life is, you know, with, 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 e with equal importance at times is absolutely crucial. We should be able to do it without feeling guilty because, yeah. as you as you said there, you know, one of a couple of things that came from the survey we did was, you know, just how little sleep brokers are still getting and the long hours that we've been working. And I know you, know, you and I spoke earlier about, you know, be, being times where you're staying up till one in the morning to either just log a case on because you're so fearful it's going to get pulled the following day so it's yeah. it has been really yeah really really challenging and what about spotting early signs of of, of of poor mental health so whether it's been I don't know friends colleagues people you've seen around you who have maybe been struggling what, what, what how, how do you spot those early signs I think I can well I think the signs in me I can I can see them uh, I don't like exactly sleep, work late, get up early, sort of going over things already. There's a constant worry or a fear you're not doing right. You feel a bit sad, a bit low. Um, and I think sometimes you sort of stray away from social aspects as well. So you stop, sort of stop avoiding, start avoiding your friends and going out and you feel so low but then I think this is the time that we need to say actually 
I'll ring, I'll ring so-and-so, I'll get them to come and, you know, I mean, some of my friends sometimes have really low days, regardless to whatever personal life they have, and I, I'll i send them a text, are you okay, how are you getting on, are you all right, what what can we do, why, why don't we do this, and I think even just a text or just um, a little bit of a quote or a saying on LinkedIn, I do like doing quite a few quotes, um, that helps somebody. You don't realise that that quote is irrelevant to them who's reading it. And I think that does um, help. Just that yeah. thing. That interaction. So, so it, again, if it's a conversation, it's a conversation. But there are other ways of just checking in and, and just interacting with those, yeah, with those around you. And what about adapting to the like the hybrid work environment? So I know you know, we, we're working from home today and we said about work-life balance, work-life integration. How have you found the, you know, operating between the office and, 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 and home and getting that, that balance right? See, I found it quite hard in COVID. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like working from home. There was a lot going off. My children were younger. One of them was doing the GCSEs. It, well, even though the weather was brilliant, everything else was so uncertain. And then the week yeah. came and it was like, it's Groundhog Day. You just felt like you was going in a circle. Whereas now, I've actually, this year, I've took a step back and thought, hold on a minute, my family is really important. My children, my husband, my friends, but also I want I want work to be as, as important, but I've got to make that difference. So going on holidays, doing more things, taking mm. steps back. I mean, we only have been working from home a few weeks, but even just going, I know this is silly, going to Costa for a break at dinner time, it breaks up the day. You see a few people and then you're back on it and or going for a walk. That's a massive thing. Taking, obviously, this dog who won't go for a walk at the minute, taking him for a walk and do something like that just to clear your mind and then ready to do the afternoon shift. Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, look, I burn. I've operated remotely <coughs> for, you know, for probably 20, you know, 20 odd years. Um, but operating remotely for me has not necessarily meant that I've worked from home. I find I find it difficult to, you know, to have my home as my office, my gym, my restaurant. Um, yeah. uh, it, it adds so many different, you know, factors to it during during COVID. And look, I even now, Cap, I'll, I'll go and spend, you know, four or five hours at a, a, a Costa. Uh, working or a, you know, another coffee shop just because I like my home to be my home and I look I'm terrible for when I'm when I'm here I'll be terrible for still picking up you know constantly I'm consumed by work and I can't help it so I'll always be looking at my emails and I'm not always present when I'm actually at home but I do try and limit the amount of hours that I actually do work here so I'm, I'm guilty of not being present when I should be present <laughs> but ultimately I try and have my home to be my home and yeah. work remotely if uh, yeah if, if I possibly if I possibly can and um, so I mean what, what, what are the hints and tips I mean look I, I, I love the, the the encouraging conversation the you know that that logic you apply to write things down that are maybe you know appear negative but then almost knock them off you know, one domino after another to so do it in a logical and sequential order, which I think is is is, is terrific. Those six monthly MOTs with the cognitive person again, I think is I think is terrific, and they are again your know, brilliant takeaways for people who are listening today. Are there anything else? Anything else that you think you know that that are just little little nuggets that have just have just worked for you? Yeah, just obviously from my point of view, my door's always open. So if anybody has any problems, work, personal, anything, I always say, just give me a ring. We'll go through it. We'll make sure we can work out if, what solution we can do because there is always a way to do that. Um, and just if you've got anything on your mind, don't let it fester in your own head. Just ask ask for help, even if it not maybe not mum and dad or work colleagues, but just a friend, just to say, what would you do in this situation? And I think that would help. Um, mm. My door's always open, so if anybody wanted to come and talk to me about anything, honestly, you know, and just everybody's there for each other, and I think that's how yeah. it would be. I think I think that accessibility is 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 important from what you say there as well. So I mean, look, you've got some brilliant 
and um, you know tried and tested methods now which help you get through and um, when you've got a, a barrier which are great and sharing that with others and um, you know people will take what they want to take won't they from yeah from, yeah. from big but just being accessible to have that conversation is is, is is absolutely crucial and then what about your know, leaders of businesses then so you know if, if they're thinking of, of of providing some support i know you, know, you guys signed up to the charter which was really chuffed about but what do you think your know, business leaders who are thinking about doing something um but don't maybe know what to do what what, what do you think your know, business leaders should be doing and could be doing I mean, obviously, I think that they need to make sure that they their um, employees know that, that it's always open. If there's a problem, can they help them? Um, and also do things a bit like a, a social aspect or maybe a baking. Or I've seen a few um, businesses do sort of bake-offs or they do quiz. I, I, I was speaking to a guy um, the other month. They do Friday quiz day, so they have a dinner time quiz. So everybody then gets involved. So something like that. Or if they just want to do it as a one-to-one -one and they feel it, maybe have a buddy mm. that they could pair up with and they could speak to that buddy about things as well. A bit like school, I suppose, but it just yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, but I think that, again, the takeaway there is just have some fun. So look, yeah. it's, it, 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 it can be tough doing what we're doing. So with the dream catches, which we mentioned at the beginning, but let's just try and have some fun along the way and have a, a culture that is really inclusive. And, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, so yeah, I love, I, I love that. And is there anything, I'm conscious of time, is there anything that maybe I've I've, I've, I've not asked that and um, maybe would have, you know, you'd have liked to have, have, have been asked during the conversation or is there anything else that, um, you know, I've not covered that you, you, know, you, you would have liked to have covered? No, I think to be fair, Jason, I think you've covered it all. And obviously, with this, with the keep the conversation going, more people, not just mortgage advisors, but more industries that do this, I think in the long term, it will work out well for everybody because you, you're if you're happy, you'll go and work in an happy environment and you'll come home happy. So that's that sort of circle is all complete. Yeah, and everybody's, you know, your children are happy, you're happy, husband's happy, dog's happy, yeah. work's happy. So, yeah. yeah. And what about the, the, the future? Last, last question then. So, what about the future? What does the next 12 months look like for you? So, I think this will go really well. Um, obviously, just carrying on, I've got, um, I've got a little bit of a gang behind me. So, Holly and so sort of Grace and Lily and my little team. So we're just gonna, yeah, let let's see what happens for the future. Get on um obviously um writing business, protect I do a lot more protection. So yeah. I'm doing an, an exam in the protection side of it. So yeah, I'm liking going I, I, or investing more time in that because I believe in that quite a bit. So right. and look at I think when you've got the experience probably we we've, we've, we've both had, and even though you think you've seen everything and you've not you can actually look back at the cycles we've seen in the past you can kind of see can't you over the next couple of years we can be positive about certainly what the specialist market is going to yes. look like you can be positive about and um, your know, customers needing protection you can be positive about and um, you're know, delivering a i suppose an holistic solution for your, yeah, for your customers so like you're know, like you i'm still really optimistic about the yeah the next couple of years and then we look with the charter and um, you know we're we, we, we thankfully we're going from strength to strength and you know, I'm, I'm really pleased as i said that you decided to get signed up and become a signatory and the signatory steering group has, has, has been launched and had their first meeting which is contributing and look i think you know 2024 for the multi mental health charter will be our best ever yet and we just want to and um, you know just keep providing um you know support and, and we want the portal to be the you know the go-to platform for people who are struggling but also the go-to platform for people who are maybe thinking about implementing some frameworks into their into their business but look i'm really grateful for your time yeah, today no um, thank you for yeah for being part and for volunteering and, and and getting involved with you know activities that we're you know we're delivering really appreciate um you and uh, yeah just have a, a really good uh, 2024 and enter 2023 so thanks for your time yeah no worries all right thank you thanks Kat. bye